All right. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Welcome, Ashley. I'm so excited to have you on this shorty episode to share your journey with everyone. Before we dive in, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me. I am Ashley Bruggeman and I own uh, Ashley Morgan Interiors. And we met at High Point Market. We did. Which was um, actually, I think I'd already, um, I mean, I felt like I'd already met you before. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so thrilled to get to have that time with you. And I think at the time, like we, I did like a little meetup at High Point and you were there with a bunch of other designers and we got to chatting and obviously we hit it off like a house on fire. And I think at that time you had said that you'd already, had you already signed up for Power of Process? You were like just waiting for it to start? Yes, I believe yes. so. Okay. And at that point I was like, oh, what, tell me about your business. And you're like, oh, well, I haven't started it yet. <laughs> Which I think is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had um, actually... Um, I go all out for Christmas. Okay. So that's where we're going to start. And, oh, I um, I have this huge, like two story stone mantle place and I, or, um, stone, um, mantle and I, um, fireplace with a mantle and decorate the mantle and have like done this for years and years. And so often I had friends telling me, um, you need to do this for other people. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. And then <laughs> like slowly different things happened. And I was like, you know what, maybe I will do that this year. Um, but I, and I'd had conversations with, um, some other individuals about like starting that and getting some, um, leads for that. And it seems like it would be easy enough. And so then I thought, well, but I want this to be like legit and be like organized with it because that's who I am. And so I started listening to podcasts, um, cause I am on the road all the time and, um, stumbled across your podcast. And as I binge it, like it's my favorite Netflix episode. <laughs> yes. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> binge. <laughs> yes. I, um, I slowly start to realize, oh my goodness, like I need to just open a design firm and just go all the way in. And for the first time in my life, I think I realized all of my education, all of my experience really culminated in this one goal or this, you know, um, idea of opening a firm. And it just really felt right. And um, so, yeah, I knew I had to have a well-oiled machine before I opened it, set a start date um, for just, well, decided I wanted to, um, do power process, um, get all my I's dotted and T's crossed, which, you know, is wishful thinking. Of course, they're not all, um, done, but good enough set a start an opening date for two weeks after, um, pop would finish and, um, didn't hit that knew that that was, you know, a lofty goal. But I hit it actually two weeks after that. So four weeks and um, opened my doors. Wow. Okay. I did not realize that you had set a date to open your firm. Maybe you told me that. I don't remember. I think that's so amazing. And I love that you held yourself accountable and it was okay that you didn't hit that date, but it wasn't long after that, that you actually did it. And I remember starting to see your post on Instagram because when we met at high point, you're like, no, I haven't started the Instagram yet. Like I'm waiting. I want to do pop. I want to get everything lined up before I start posting and doing things. And then as we're going through pop, I don't know if it was during that or just after 
I start seeing you posting. So of course I follow all my students and I'm like, po you're posting. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And now I see your posts every day or when I, as frequently as you post, I'm like, yeah. yes, she's talking about her process. Yes. That quote's so good. I'm like, yes, go girl. You go girl. I love that. Thanks. Love it. Thanks. Can we just um, rewind a second? Because I want in this shorty episode to give people a better understanding of where you came from. So you decided after listening to the podcast, which I think is amazing, and I feel a little pressure to, to make sure that I keep supporting you on this journey, although you're a strong woman, you'll be fine without me, um, but to make sure that people understand where you came from. So you were listening and like, yep, I want to do this, but you actually have a background in design. Do you want to maybe just tell everyone, here's your summary of Ashley, the student to where you landed today. Sure. So I, um, first of all, strong women need strong women. Um, yes, and, this is true. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, you are not. Um, <laughs> I will not let you. Uh, so yeah, I have an interior design degree and worked for a commercial firm for just a few years. And what's funny is at that time, I really snubbed my notes, like snubbed residential design. I don't know why it's so funny now, like in my forties thinking about, oh, smart little me <laughs> you <need laughs> so much. Um, but I really, really wanted just to do commercial design. And then I got into commercial design and realized, oh, there's still emotions there. Um, so I actually worked on a church project and a, I presented the finishes and the carpet and this one lady on the board, the building board, um, said, Oh, Susie can't walk down the aisle on that carpet. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> and, um, and that's not even really residential. No, not at all. I mean, this is all commercial. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, I can't do this either. So, um, uh, I thought, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm really suited for sales, but I love the industry and didn't want to leave the industry. And so I, um, got a job with, uh, a manufacturer who sells into actually a carpet, uh, commercial carpet mill, um, who sells into, um, commercial design. And so I did that and, and now work for a different manufacturer. And so I've spent 20 years selling to architects and designers and all of these commercial firms across multiple states, um, doing continuing education for architects and designers, getting them to specify my product, educating them on the products um, and the manufacturing processes, and then even managing the subcontractors um, who are bidding my projects uh, and installing them. And then uh, the first manufacturer I worked for was very um, adamant about sustainability issues. And that's when the USGBC really launched the LEED program and it was hot and heavy. And um, so they would pay, they paid for me to set for my LEED exam. So I did that uh, in 2009. And then I went back to school, um, I don't know, like five or so years ago and got my executive MBA um, as well. And so I lo equally love the creative and my environment and spreadsheets and business and numbers <laughs> and like playing the game of how to accomplish uh, certain goals. So it's really um, a perfect match to have now a design business where I get to do both. I love that. I love that you have that experience under your belt, like sales, a lot of designers listening don't enjoy sales, right? Sales feels challenging. Sometimes it can feel uncomfortable. Um, and so this is why I know that you are immediately going to just lie because you have already skill sets that takes a lot of us time to develop. And that's because you've also developed those skills in the 20 plus years of being in the working world and being surrounded by design. But this is different, right? And I want to just sort of quickly touch on this for those who are thinking, well, sure, she started her design firm because... Well, she was, she went to school for design. She's been working in the design world. Like that must have been really easy. Talk to us about that because you're doing, you're, if I believe you're going after residential design clients. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is the thing that you always poo pooed and never wanted to do. Yeah. So 
has it been a seamless transition starting to find interior design residential clients from your previous sort of experience? Or are you finding that this is a bit of uncharted territory? Just tell us a little bit about that transition. Uh, no, I think it's definitely uncharted territory because these are not the same people that I have worked with in the past. My experience obviously helps in that I have that confidence um, from whatever experience I'm coming to the table with, but this is personal. Like I'm not, I'm selling me and my capabilities now, which is very different than selling for somebody else or a manufacturer or anything else. So I think when it's, when it's personal and it's me that you're either rejecting or accepting or whatever, you know, it carries a little more weight and it's, um, it's definitely a different, uh, skill set, I think. Yeah. I think that's important. We've talked about this on the podcast a lot and I've spoken to a lot of commercial designers, some pop students and others who are, uh, simply, you know, design firms that have been around for a while. There's such a difference between commercial and residential, um, and not just the technical side, it's the people is what I'm hearing you say. Mm -hmm. And, I've only dabbled in commercial a little bit and it wasn't for me. Uh, but the one thing I did like about it was the client because the client has a budget and yeah, great. You say it looks great. That's great. It fits in budget. Let's go versus like what you just said. Well, I can't picture Susie walking down the aisle with that carpet. Mm -hmm. Could it be a, li a slightly lighter shade of red, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, there's so many personal. So I'm excited to follow your journey and see how you navigate this transition. Um, What's a bit of advice that you have for anyone listening today who is thinking about launching a design firm um, because, sorry, so thinking of starting launching a design firm, maybe they have a similar or different background. What would you tell them to do? What would be the first thing you would tell them to do? Um, hmm. I would say um, to surround yourself with people who believe in you when you don't. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Um, that's definitely been helpful for me, whether it's just the silly things of social media, right? Like putting out something and thinking, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. Like, should I delete it? Like, you know, being so nervous about how I am perceived. And then, you know, my girlfriends just like step up and they're like, on fire and, you know, loving things. And it just, um, you know, that's, that's what you need. I mean, you need cheerleaders in your corner. Um, so whether it's other designers that you're able to meet through spaces like, um, the, um, designers, um, group that you have, or, um, you know, your own personal connections and friends, it's just invaluable. Yeah. I love that advice because we can be our worst critics. And especially mm -hmm. when we're going into our uncharted territories and we've never done it before, it can be, we can be really quick to say, oh, this isn't working. This isn't for me. And I, I love that advice. Being supported in community, whether it's family, friends, designers room, joining pop and seeing how other people do it and knowing, okay, I'm not alone. It's so helpful to keep that momentum going. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. Wow. We're going to be having a longer episode with you. So those of you who like this episode with Ashley, you want to get into more dirty details. <laughs> You're going to stay tuned for that. And we will share that um, in, I don't know when it's going to air, but it's going to air soon. It's going to be so good. Thank you for joining me today, Ashley. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Ashley's such a dynamo. I love how professional she is showing up already and she's just begun. You're going to want to follow her journey. And in fact, I loved this conversation so much that I invited her to come back and record a full length uh, episode with me and get into the nitty gritty and the details of exactly what it looked like to set herself up for success in order to launch her interior design firm. I think you're going to really enjoy that episode too. Let me know. Go show up. Give me a um, show up. Go pop over to iTunes. Give me a five-star review. Pretty please. I would love it if you're enjoying this podcast or share it with somebody who you think could benefit. If this shorty resonated, let me know and I will see you on the next one.